Hey folks, Jeremiah Johnson here uh, to teach you a little bit about some spinning techniques while juggling. Uh, using the momentum from a toss or from a swing to accentuate the juggling pattern and make it all flow nice and smooth. And there are a couple of primary techniques that you need to understand and need to be considering as you learn this stuff. Uh, understand when the time is that you're going to be using to add the swing, right? So there's time underneath every single throw, right? Every underneath every single, there's enough time to add like a quick little swing, for example. If you want to increase that time, then you got to throw it a little higher. Something like a Mike's Mess using doubles gives you more time to swing. And so understanding where that time is and how to create more time is an important step towards integrating more of this into your juggling style. The next most important thing to understand is how to maximize the efficiency of that time using the transfer of momentum from a catch or from a swing to lead into and out of tosses and swinging. And so that's what most of this workshop is going to talk about. Uh, first thing that we want to talk about is dropping two clubs on the ground as a way of learning a lot of these techniques. It really increases the efficiency of understanding the concepts. If you can't do it with one club, don't expect to do it with three. It's the best way to go. So, just from a single toss, as soon as that club hits your, ground, uh, hits your hand, feel the momentum of the club, right? It's pushing it, the gravity is pulling it down, as well as the body of the club wanting to swing because you just caught the handle, right? You're creating a hinge with your hand. And so it leads directly into a little swing. As soon as you toss it, allow that swing to happen. As soon as it hits your hand, the swing has already begun. You need to allow that club to swing. The transition of momentum is happening here on the catch itself, a leading into the swing. But then when I'm ready to toss it, I actually stop the swing and force the club back into the air. So this is using the momentum from the swing and stop to toss. The reverse of that would be stop on the catch and lead into the toss with a swing. So you get the forward swing, stop, toss, and the stop swing into the toss. So the reverse swing. And so using two clubs for starters, we'll do the forward swing, toss, toss, swing, swing. Right? The, feel the rhythm of just those two clubs. Make sure that you can maximize the amount of time that you've got there before mixing up that third club. And let's do the reverse one here real quick. Swing, 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 swing. And uh, integrating that third club in, you get what I call outside swings or outside shots. Pitch is actually pretty much the same thing as switching to chops. The only difference here is that I'm chopping over the next incoming club versus swinging on the outside. Either way, I'm still using the momentum in the same way. As soon as I catch it, I swing it on the outside. And then if you reverse the direction and change from the catch, you go into the reverse swings or reverse outside chops or takeouts. On more of a wall plane, you're gonna see it look more like this if you're catching and adding that extra little swing. Here's a great little trick that starts warming you up to the idea of doing the Mike's Mess. Uh, gonna have to have a solid two in one hand and then the other club swings. <laughs> Pretty simple, right? Well, okay, let's take it to the next step. In this case, I'm gonna time the swing with the clubs as I can swing it through between the two clubs, weaving it in the middle, finding that open space. You could, uh, you could integrate it underneath as well if you wanna get a little extra swing in there. And you can also switch which hand it's doing. It. So if you did a 4-2-3 version, something like that from the front, 
starts getting some swingy into your pattern early on. Just got to have that two in one hand nice and comfortable. So at first you could even just do a four, two, three with a little swing on the side to use the time. Find that time. Start to split that brain in half so you can get the swinging and the juggling happening simultaneously. It's a really useful pattern. All right, our little outside swings are going to be a crucial element for learning one of my favorite spinning patterns, the Mike's Mess. Mike's Mess, uh, to start out, looks like this. And every time I catch it, I use the momentum to travel into a weave. That's the swinging pattern that I'm doing with my uh, two hands down below. And I'm just doing this under doubles. Basically, Mike's Mess is swinging a weave while throwing doubles. But there's a few things to notice about it. The throw comes from underneath my hand that's swinging on my non-native side. So my left hand is swinging on my right side when I throw it with my right hand. And then it switches. My left hand throws underneath my right arm while it's swinging on its non-native side. Uh, you can start with this one club it's going to swing down to the non-native side as you throw that double up. And that's going to be an access point with the three clubs. So basically, throw, swing. So as soon as I throw it, the other one has to follow the swinging club, my left hand. In line with using the momentum of the catch to lead into the next throw, uh, there's the lovely three club wall plane mess. Whoa. Going back and forth here. Now, as you can see, there's this carry through throw, the first in the sequence. I have to use the, trans the, the momentum from that catch to carry it across to the other side. So that throw alone Learning to get that throw over the arm is going to be a really crucial one for this. But this pattern opens up the door for all kinds of spinning possibilities. Because it, if I throw the third club as a double, then I can start to use the extra time and the momentum from the rest of the, of the mess throws in order to get some spins in. Something like that. Something like that. Something like this. And I'm using the uh, mess to get me the back and forth style pattern. And then I use the Mike's Mess style swinging to access some of the bigger stuff. Lots of possibilities in there. We'll get into some of that in another workshop down the road. This next pattern is going to use the anti-spin throw. So from a swing, I'm going to ex extend out so the anti-spin hit the point and that's what's going to lead into the toss that goes across to the other side. So it's going to be with the native, or the, the throw happens from the native side, so right hand throws right side across. And so the pattern itself, you get your, your cascade going on uh, something of a wall plane and then you're going to just add swings underneath that so that the swing leads into the next toss. So you're using the momentum to add the swing from the catch, and you're using the momentum to lead into the next toss. And so once you've got that, and you've got the space sorted out, then you can start to add the extra anti-spin emphasis. Notice that I'm pulling the club across as far as I can before anti-spinning in the opposite direction to really try and emphasize the shape. Right? That's what's going to distinguish it from simply swings under your cascade. So, anti-spin, emphasizing that cross-body part of the swing is what's really going to help with that. Continuing along our little journey, let's take a look at something that doesn't involve a traditional flip and swing, but uh, uses something like a no-beat throw. Now, a no-beat throw, in its own right, starts to create sort of a spinning type circle uh, and is a great opportunity for us to lead into other spinning type techniques. 
the momentum always transfers into the next toss. From here, you can add extra little swings if you want. So start playing around with some of the use of space and use of momentum transfer. So I can swing behind my hip and swing into the throw. Notice I'm always throwing from one side back to the other just to maintain that momentum. If I'm gonna throw from the other side, I have to change directions. Uh, this guy right here. This one is really useful because it starts getting you warmed up to the idea of using a pattern that has a lot of spinning potential. And so here I'm using a, a 4 2 3 to get myself a little extra time so that I can add some extra swinging in. Uh, and so let me break down that pattern for you. Two clubs in the right hand, one club in the left hand. I'm gonna do my first throw from my right side leading towards my left side, and my left hand is going to follow it. So I go one, two, three toward the left side. And so one, two, three, and then I'm going to switch back the other direction. My, uh, what was my starting hand, my right hand, is going to emphasize that position on the opposite side because it's gonna throw back the opposite direction. So it goes like this, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. So the non-native hand is in my right hand on my left side is going to point and provide that moment over here from which that next throw is going to happen. You have to accentuate that moment so that you get a nice clean uh, back and forth going on. So once again, right hand starts on the right side, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. And the, uh, the four, for those of you who are already curious about it, uh, happens at uh, the first throw is going to throw it there. So at first you don't even need to do anything, just add that four. You don't have to throw it as a flat, you can throw it as a double if you want, just to acknowledge the time. All right, this pattern has been great for warming up the idea of the Seb's Mess world. And so the pattern looks like this. It's got two, it's got two in one direction and one back the other direction. And then you're gonna switch sides using both sides of your body. So it goes something like this. Two, one, one, two, one, one, two, one, one, two, one, one, two, one. Now, a couple things to point out. You'll notice the throw that switches sides for me is a throw that is from the native side or throws to the native side. So right hand throws to right side but is going to be caught by the left hand. And so one, two, one, one, two, one. So I throw right hand to right side, left hand follows and then right hand resets to the other side. And then left hand throws to native side. Right, left to native side. So right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. Notice the whole time I'm saying right, left, right, left, right, left. I'm just putting the emphasis on certain throws to get them to, to point them out. So you get right hand throws to right side, caught by left hand. It's your first two throws, right, left, right, left, right, as a reset, right, left, right. And when I get here, and that one's on its way, left hand throws back to left side, right, left, 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 right. That's going to wrap it up. For me for now, have fun out there.